Hello, sweet friends, and welcome back to the channel. If we haven't met yet, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Sally, um, and spring has officially sprung, at least here where I am, um, and I haven't done just a good old-fashioned recipe video in a little bit, so I thought that it was due time. So today I'm sharing with you three spring meal ideas that I've really been loving. Of course, they are all macronutrient balanced, nutrient dense, and delicious. That is super important. Please don't forget, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Let's just get into it. Our first recipe is a whole roast chicken, specifically a buttermilk roast chicken served with a springtime panzanella. If I'm saying that wrong, comment below. I know I sound ridiculous, um, but we had a whole conversation about it in one of my recent videos. Um, that being said, we are starting out with a whole chicken. I love to find one that is pasture raised. You're getting more nutrients from the meat, higher quality food as a whole, and you're going to salt it really thoroughly, ideally the day before um, you want to cook with it. So I have salted it thoroughly, um, more than you think you need, put it in this bag, and then I'm adding between one and two cups of whole milk. I don't have buttermilk on hand, so I'm just you know making an alternative myself, and about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Now you can use lemon juice, you can use white vinegar, any sort of acid, and just a little bit of more salt um, in the bag with everything else. We're gonna seal it up and make sure it is combined thoroughly to coat the chicken as a whole, and then we're gonna pop it in the fridge until tomorrow. I love using buttermilk because it makes the chicken extra tender and juicy. And the next day I am just pulling it out of the bag. Gonna do my best to get all the extra buttermilk off, setting it in a pan, and that's gonna go into a preheated oven at 425 degrees with the handle all the way to the left side um, so that the breast is kind of in that back corner where it gets the hottest. I'll cook it for about 20 minutes like this, um, check on it, and then rotate it around. But next up, getting started on our salad. So it's a torn crew on salad I am starting off with some homemade sourdough bread cutting it into big chunks um, and after I have it cut up into manageable pieces I'm gonna start tearing it up into even smaller pieces now I leave the crust on but I know some people don't like the crust and you could you know save that for something else if you prefer but I think it's delicious so tearing it up um, and then we're ultimately going to toss it on to our baking sheet and once it's on that baking sheet we have some olive oil some salt some pepper or not measuring it out, but just putting it all on there. It's gonna go in that 425 degree oven with the chicken. Just keep a close eye on it. It should take around 10 to 12 minutes. And while we're doing that, I'm going to um, take the bottoms off my asparagus. Make sure you don't break them off too high. That's such a waste. Um, put your fingers down pretty low and where it naturally wants to snap is usually good. Um, and then I'm slicing up my asparagus into small pieces. This is going into some hot water to blanch. And as you can see, bubbling away just for about four to five minutes. And then we're gonna drain that asparagus. So now we're assembling our salad. We have our torn croutons throwing on that asparagus. I have some pickled onions here, which are going on top. Um, you can absolutely slice up some onions, just throw them in some vinegar the day of, um, if that works better for you. And then I have some feta cheese, be generous with it, crumble that on top. Um, and then in a moment here, you'll see I put some dill on it as well. So it's a feta, um, asparagus, and torn crouton salad, panzanella, um, and a little olive oil, red wine vinegar, salt and pepper on top. So there is our beautiful chicken. Again, check out salt, fat, acid, heat if you want the full method. Got our salads, got a little bit of rosé, and we're on to the next meal idea. So we are making here a salmon with potatoes and a yogurt dill sauce, and I'm going to be serving it with spring peas. But of course, we are starting off with some Yukon gold potatoes. These are my personal favorite, um, at least affordable potato. So chopping them up nicely. They're going to go onto a baking sheet and we are going to top them with some olive oil, salt, and pepper as well. You can totally add um, garlic powder, any other seasoning you want. You are going to toss those up and throw them into a 450 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Meanwhile, I am making my yogurt sauce. So I'm zesting a lemon here. I don't need all of it, about a teaspoon. You're gonna add to that lemon zest about, let's say a half cup of yogurt. Um, I used Greek today because that's what I had on hand, but to be honest, it is best with a creamier yogurt, um, like a European style whole milk yogurt. And then we're throwing in some lemon juice. Do all of this to taste, that's how I always do it. But I did about half a lemon to 
cornstarch, and then a clove of garlic crushed up. And here we have some of our fresh dill, which we are mincing up as well. We are gonna add some salt, you might want to add a little bit of pepper and then I'm adding some pickle juice which is kind of a, a weird hack that I learned from Sarah Therese um, but I am stirring this all up and just taste it just as needed um, and then we have our salmon this is the Kita salmon from Costco it's a little bit higher protein lower fat wild caught of course I've seasoned it with salt and it's just going into a hot skillet with olive oil you are gonna put it skin side up to start for four minutes you want to get a nice crust on it. Honestly, my pan wasn't quite hot enough today, but it still turned out really good. Um, it stays for about four minutes skin side up, and then you are going to flip it over skin side down to finish. Uh, and that should take about, we'll say, you know, four to six minutes, maybe a little longer, depending on how thick your salmon is. Just keep an eye on it um, and cook it to your discretion. While salmon is a little bit higher in PUFAs for fish, it comes with vitamin E and the other necessary nutrients to prevent oxidative stress, so I never worry about eating it. But um, now we have some spring peas, or rather English peas, nice spring vegetable, tossing them in the steamer. And as you can see, our potatoes are nice and crispy and have come out of the oven. Those peas steamed for just about six minutes, and I'm packaging these meals up to go today. Um, but I have some potatoes dropping the peas um, into the dish. Of course, I'll top it with a little bit of butter we have our salmon and then we're just going to put that creamy dill sauce right on top and enjoy it with those potatoes as well our last recipe is an asian inspired ginger meatball soup i am making some bread crumbs here but you can absolutely you know get these from the store if you would prefer use whatever bread you have on hand and i am chopping up some cilantro nice and finely here so that we can add it all to our meatballs so i have about two pounds of ground chicken i'm adding about a tablespoon of salt you may use a little bit more don't be afraid of it um, but obviously you know you can't take it back when it comes to meatballs so don't go too hard too fast We're gonna add a tablespoon of garlic powder and then I also have some onion salt onion powder works too but onion salt is what I have on hand and I'm adding about a tablespoon of that as well I am going to go ahead and add my breadcrumbs I have about a cup of them and then I'm adding my cilantro adding some pepper adding some salt and you can throw an egg or two in here if you want but I didn't this time and they turned out quite well so you want to go ahead and combine this mixture really thoroughly and then we're going to start forming our meatballs that's you know pretty straightforward it's just a bit of a sticky situation but it can be it can be fun too i like to make them really little um, so that you have lots of bites throughout the dish and these are just packed with flavor with the garlic and with the cilantro so there they are now we are going to make the base of our soup this is a great way to get some bone broth in i will often make bone broth myself but i didn't really have time this week so i got some bone broth from trader joe's um, great option and it's not too terribly expensive so i am using this you can also absolutely use some bone broth because it is more expensive and some like regular chicken broth so that you have more volume um, if that if that helps you out but we are measuring out about two cups ultimately of broth this is just one serving of soup that i'm putting together here and then i am slicing up some ginger really finely um, you can absolutely grate this ginger if you don't want to bite into it but i kind of liked biting into it in this soup so i just made matchsticks crushing our garlic and then we're throwing ginger and garlic to taste into the broth. Now there are plenty of things you can add in here. I like, um, it's like gochujang, I think is what you say. It's like a garlicky chili paste, but anyways, just as it is, is great too. And we've dropped our meatballs into the broth, covering it up, gonna let it steam for about five minutes. And now I have some sea vegetables. Now um, this is just dried seaweed and a great way to get some extra iodine in. Um, so I am dropping that into the soup. Be careful though, because a little bit goes a long way. Um, it really fluffs up and <laughs> I learned that the hard way, but we are serving this up. You can add some sriracha, um, some again, garlic chili sauce, anything you want, but it is a warming soup. Great, especially if you're experiencing those seasonal allergies. Well, that's it for today, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Please let me know in the comments which of these recipes looks the best to you. If you're gonna try them, I would, I would love to know. Um, but again, thanks for being here. Until next time, bye y'all.